And I will cover the very basics of making a pad in the first couple of minutes or so, and then I'm gonna show how we can improve that sound. There are four key steps when making pads. Waveform selection and layering, increasing the attack and release time of the amplitude envelope, adding reverb and delay, and adding motion. So let's get started by selecting our waveform. There are a number of wavetables to choose from, and in this tutorial, I'm just gonna pick the basic shapes wavetable. Feel free to experiment and find a sound that you like. I'm gonna start with the sawtooth waveform. Next, let's adjust the amplitude envelope by increasing the attack and release times of envelope one. Remember that envelope one is automatically applied to the volume level to oscillators. I like to round out the attack to make it smoother. It is helpful to alternate between playing notes and silence so that you can better dial in the release time. You'll likely want to add a filter to take off some of the harshness of the upper end. Play around with the filter settings until you get the sound you like. Next, let's add some reverb and delay to the sound. I like to use dotted eighth notes on the delay because it falls between beats, making it more noticeable. I also set the filter mode to ping pong to get some motion in the stereo field. When dialing in the delay setting, sometimes I like to temporarily remove the amplitude envelope's attack so that I can hear it better. Then I can put the longer attack back in and fine tune the results. For the reverb, I like to add a bit of a low cut to make the mix less muddy. I'm going to turn the delay off temporarily so I can hear the reverb better by itself. Sometimes it's helpful to turn the reverb all the way up so you can hear it really well as you're changing the settings. Once you've got the settings you like, then you can dial it down to get it to the right amount of reverb. I'm going to increase the reverb time, the size, and add a little bit of pre-delay. Let's hear it with both the reverb and delay. And that's the basics of how to make a pad sound. From here on out, we'll be improving our sound. There are many ways to do this, and it depends on what you're looking for. A lot of it boils down to adjusting your oscillator sounds and by adding motion. I'm going to add a second oscillator to add some more high end to my sound. Before I forget, I'm going to turn on the filter for oscillator 2. Then I'm going to select the basic shapes wavetable and select the sine wave. Feel free to experiment with different wavetables. Now let's transpose the pitch up an octave, which is 12 semitones. Octaves always fit nicely within your sound. Let's turn off oscillator 1 temporarily to isolate oscillator 2 while we adjust it. Let's add some motion to oscillator 2's volume. I'm moving the volume knob back and forth a few times to simulate what it could sound like with an LFO. Since I like how this sounds, I will add an LFO to turn the knob automatically for me. I'm going to temporarily turn off the reverb and delay so I can hear the effect better by itself. It's a lot easier to hear it this way. I want the effect to be subtle, but if I'm not hearing it and turn off the reverb and delay and I still can't hear it, then it isn't adding anything to the sound and I've probably done something wrong. It's true that all that matters is the final sound, but I found this is to be a useful troubleshooting technique. I'm gonna slow down the LFO rate and make sure the mode is set to sync. The mode setting is a personal preference. If you want the LFO to restart when the note plays, set it to trigger. I like to set it to sync so that it won't restart when a new note is played. For this type of sound, I think it makes it sound smoother and less blocky. Let's bring oscillator one back in to hear where we're at. I like to try something different by adding extra motion in the high end. I've noticed that by transposing oscillator 2 up various octaves while the notes are played, it has an interesting sound.
Let's set up an LFO to do this automatically. This is a little tricky since we need to map the pitch shift to jump by octaves only. I'm going to create a custom stepped LFO using LFO2 slot. I'm going to turn on editing and set the number of grid lines in the Y axis to 8. This is going to make it easier. I'm also going to set the editing mode to step. Through experimentation I found out that two Y axis grid lines correspond to an octave using these settings. I then set the octave somewhat at random to see what it sounds like. Now let's apply this LFO to Oscillator 2's course pitch control and use the default range. Let's turn off Oscillator 1 to see how it sounds by itself and adjust the rate until you get the sound you like. You may notice that something doesn't sound right here. We have a note that doesn't fall on an octave. I'm not seeing the problem yet, but I'll come back to this. Try playing around with the root octave by adjusting the coarse pitch up and down an octave. Let's change the MIDI source to my 8 bar sequence to see how it sounds. I finally found the error in my LFO. It's now fixed and will only jump up and down whole octaves. Now let's play around with adding some effects. You can play around with these to get the sound you want, but I'll start with distortion. I'll place it before the reverb and delay and then crank up the settings to hear it, to hear the effect clearly. Then I can dial it back to a setting I like. I'm going to add LFO3 to the distortion mix knob to add more motion to the sound. Play around with other effects as you like. Here I'm going to add a subtle flanger before the distortion. Oscillator 2 now seems a little loud, so I'm going to turn it down. You might consider adding a third oscillator to handle the low end. Depending on your mix, you may want to avoid the low end to make room for your bass. But if you don't have a bass playing at the same time, it can add a really nice low end to your pad. Let's increase the maximum number of voices before I forget. Now let's add some unison to the oscillators and set the detune factor to a reasonably small value. Let's add some random wobble to the high oscillator's detune factor to make the sound a little more interesting. It's important you set the min and max values to an appropriate range so it doesn't sound too out of tune. Feel free to play around with the waveforms and levels to get the sound you like. Finally, let's assign some macros. This will be useful to help us better fit the sound into our music. The settings you use when it's played by itself may be very different than the settings you'll need to make it fit better into your song. I'm going to assign three macros, one for attack time, one for release time, and one for the reverb and delay. Let's assign each one, set the min and max ranges, and test each one out. 
Let's reduce the maximum value of the tack time. Same with the release time. Let's assign Macro 3 to both the Delay and Reverb Mix knobs. Let's test each one. It sounds very different with all the knobs turned down to zero. You probably should set the minimum values better so that it always sounds good, even when set to the minimum. But having it completely off is sometimes nice for testing and isolating components of the sound when fine-tuning it later. Exposing the reverb and delay is very useful when mixing. Finally, let's save the preset. And that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something new and useful. And if you found this useful, go ahead and subscribe. It's helpful for me, and you'll get notified when new content is released. Until then, keep making music, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.